let's dive in and create your first Zap. If you haven't already, sign up for a free Zapier account. When you sign up, you can choose the apps you use frequently so that you get suggestions for our pre-made automated workflows, which we call Zap templates. If you see a template you like, you can click on it to build your Zap. It'll have the apps, the trigger, and the action already selected. But right now, we're gonna show you how to build a Zap from scratch. Let's say we keep forgetting to update our Slack status. So we wanna update it automatically whenever an event in our Google Calendar begins. Click on Make a Zap to access the Zap Editor. This is where you'll build your Zap. To start, you'll select the first app and event that will serve as your trigger. Remember, for any Zap to launch, we need a trigger to come first. When this thing happens in an app, it kickstarts or triggers your automation. For us, our trigger is when a new event in Google Calendar begins. You'll be prompted to sign into that app's account using your credentials if you haven't connected it before. And we should note, the only actions Zapier takes on your app accounts are the ones that are needed to run the Zaps that you make. Once you connect your app, you can customize the event that will trigger your Zap. This will look different depending on which app you're trying to connect. In our example, we're selecting the specific calendar and how far in advance we want to trigger our automation. Once you've specified your trigger, Zapier will pull in sample data that already exists in your account. This is important because you'll be using this information to build and test your Zap. When you're happy with your sample data, click Continue. Now you'll pick your second app and event. This will serve as your action. This is what you want your automation to do when the trigger occurs. Your Zap isn't complete without an action. And here, our action will be updating our Slack status. Once you've selected your action app and the event, you'll need to sign into that account just like we did earlier. All right, you've chosen the apps you need to use and what you want them to do. Now you get to decide where you want the data to go when you customize your action event. Here, you'll see different types of fields. And remember, fields hold placeholders where you can select information from prior apps or insert your own info. If we want static text that shows up every time our Zap runs, we can type that in. If you wanna use information from your trigger app, just click on a blank field. It'll pull up a drop-down menu of that data from your app. For us, it's Google Calendar. Select the data you want in this field. So in this example, if we select Event Starts, Zapier will pull whatever the event start time is from our Google Calendar event, and it will insert into this field in Slack. Once you're happy with what you want your Zap to do, let's test it out. Zapier will carry out a test action according to what you've configured earlier. You can review the action to make sure it's doing what you want and make any changes. And once you're done editing, make sure to click the slider at the bottom to turn your Zap on. So let's recap. To create a Zap, you need to first connect your trigger app and customize the trigger event. When this thing happens in an app, it kickstarts or triggers your automation. Test your sample data to make sure it's pulling in the information you want. Then connect your action app and customize the action event. This is what you want your second app to do when your trigger app does something. Customize your action by clicking on a blank field to pull up a drop-down menu. From this drop-down menu, you can select data from your trigger you want to serve as a placeholder. Or if you want the same text to appear every time your Zap runs, type in your own. Then test your action, make any necessary changes, and don't forget to turn on your Zap. Now that you've created your first Zap, try automating a few more tasks you've outlined in the automation cheat sheet, which is attached to this lesson. And we'll see you in the next one.